Thank you. <laughs> Stole my line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's always well. It's always a pleasure to be on the same stage as John Robson um, because he talks about the big picture of our constitution, which people have a hard time to understand. Even though you try to simplify it, they have a hard time to understand. I've been fighting issues that are fairly easy to understand, like slavery and tax collection. Uh, if anybody's read my book, that, uh, Tea Party of One, that's what I talk about. But the uh, funny thing is, on the way to a protest, tax protest, government agents keep stumbling in front of me and get me involved in more fights that I hadn't planned. Like the sign by law in Russell. Um, that was totally unexpected, but uh, what John Robson was talking about is the notwithstanding clauses. Uh, in case you don't know what, there are two of them. Section 33, which is what Quebec uses for page 101 to keep it alive. But there's also section 1. And that is, the first notwithstanding clause is the government is for the government, and it has a sunset clause that you have to renew every five years. Section one is for the courts that they can invoke at any time they feel like it. Even though the parties don't ask for it, they can invoke it. I had won the sign by law. If you read the transcripts, they admit I'm correct, but they invoked it. And when they invoked it, they also threw all the costs on our Galvanov and I about $180,000 of cost. Now you wonder, you know, how can a court say, yeah, you're right, you're, you've defended your rights properly, but we were involved in our standing clause, and now you have to pay $180,000 in court costs. Uh, Howard and I both told them to take a long walk off a short pier until the hats close. But the loss is there. And people don't realize how fickle our courts have become. Now there's still one more act in the sign by law. Um, and uh, it's going to come right after my, my next court case, which is what I'm going to talk to you now. I opened my business in 79, uh, well not my business, but the new shop in 79. And I went by the zoning by law that was present at that time that existed from 77. After 40 years, well, especially after the uh, sign by law issue was closed, in 2014, the township served me with a fine for operating a business uh, practice that was outside the zoning by law that I was on. They changed the zoning by law in 2012, and now we're enforcing it. Long story short, we went to court last year, after six months with the township looking for a lawyer trying to argue the case because he couldn't find anybody who wanted to argue it. <laughs> it was obvious. I've been there for 40 years. I should be automatically grandfathered. They don't want to respect it, but they don't want to talk about it either. So we're in court and we're, I'm asking questions to the planner and she defines how the new zoning bylaw works. Well, imagine this. I rent space to a dealer, well he's allowed to have cars that are parked there. As a repair shop, I can have cars in my yard to be repaired. But if you have a blown engine and I tell you, well, you need a new motor, and it'll take a week before I get it, the new bylaw forces garages to take the car off the lot and send it back to the owner's place. I cannot store a car to be repaired for a week or a day. That's how, I, and the worst thing is, they don't realize what they've done. They actually think that it's only something that's in the Netherlands or whatever, where garages will go along with the bylaw if nobody complains. I don't know how they can validate it. But anyway, I'm testifying now, and the uh, lawyer for the township Ask me what I do with cars once I take, like I told him, I said, I have cars on my lot, I take parts off of them, repair other cars. And he says, well, when you do that, what do you do with your old car? But I send it to scrap. He says, you're a wreck yard. He classified me as a wreck yard, just like that. 
is wrong. That can be argued. But then I turned to the lawyer, to the judge, and I said, well, if that's the case, then I should be grandfathered. And it ended there. Now, this is going to get really, really wild. The guy who drove me there, Mike Kennedy, like, we, I've done my final summation, so as a lawyer, and the judge got to deliberate. My friend says, I'm going to go outside for a cigarette. He's outside. The lawyer for the township comes out. So does the bylaw officer. Bylaw officer goes up to the lawyer, and, and he doesn't know that that's my friend out there. He says, what a Hail Mary pass Jean-Serge made when he invoked grandfather. And you know what? He's right. So I now have a bar officer who is hiding yes. the facts from the court. So I was found guilty and understand something. I did not use a section of the Municipal Act because I purposely lost. The reason is if I would have won at the provincial at the uh, provincial offenses court, it would have ended there. When you go before a JP, Win or lose, it stays in that courtroom. If I, when I'm going to the appeal, it's at a higher court in front of a provincial judge. Winning there affects the whole province. And that's my goal. Now, the section of the municipal act that I'm using is section 10, which says that a municipality can pass bylaws for its property or assets, for its services, for its boards and for its committees. Subsection 4 says they cannot regulate the activities of a private person. I could have used it, I didn't, as I said. Um, that's going to be said at the appeal. Now, I'm not going to do the appeal myself. I am hiring Jeff Bogart from the landowners, from the new uh, legal division that they've started up. And that is the whole intent. Winning that case gives credibility to the landowners as having a viable legal branch that people can now uh, approach. Because Mark Tyson, the guy who had killed the baby, can tell you a lot of how the justice system works when you hire a lawyer who only wants to negotiate a lower arrangement but not really try to get you off because it's too much work. And an agency that's going to start up, like the landowners having the, uh, the, the justice uh, arm of, of the organization, is going to be very beneficial. And there's one thing is, when you have someone coming out of the law society or the law, uh, law school, they get indoctrinated in a certain way. And one of them is to, you, you, they get educated in procedures, not the law. Lawyers don't know the law. They only know procedures when they come out. They learn the law as they go along. But when you're into a, a, a firm that just wants you to get the job done fast, negotiate, and never mind justice, that's why our legal system, our legal industry, is going the way it's going. So I'm in court December 13th. And uh, anybody who wants to come, you're more than invited. I would love to have a full courtroom because that will really influence the judge um, knowing you in Lorignal. Uh It's at the bottom of the street. If you ask, uh, they'll direct you to the uh, right courtroom. Uh, I, anyway, when you come to Lorignal, there's a uh, court road and it's right at the bottom of the street, right in front of the post office in Lorignal. I have any questions? Yeah? Well, um, I'm on Facebook. I'll be posting it on Facebook so you can. Uh, I'll send you it, Grace. I'll send you the information. Send it. I mean, okay, Mike. Sure. Yeah, share it because uh, if I was to fill that courtroom, I do know because hey, it's not just for me. I mean, this is you were talking about the Constitution, and the thing that we've been talking about is people just don't understand it. But when you deal with the little things. Like a government taking away your capacity to earn a living because they just simply passed a law, and you've addressed that. When you start taking away people's rights, and you don't fight back, you just keep on doing it. 
but they start to lose once. And that's that's the whole thing. They can't afford to lose one fight. They lose one, there's a domino effect. Yeah. And they know it. That's the only reason why I've not been taken to court on the fact that I don't collect money for the government. <laughs> that's the only reason. They lose once in court on that, they're done. As a matter of fact, I've had Revenue Canada come and see me last year and they ran away with their tail between their, their legs. Because it would have been um, I can tell you the story will be half an hour, so it'll be for another time. It'll be my second book. Thank you, John Gray. If I can get you to pick out another ticket for us.